Whoever said that size doesn't matter clearly did not have children. Because once you've got ankle biters, a frozen addiction, Disney Plus on tap, feces on the carpet, and all the stuff that goes with kids, you need all the length and girth that you can possibly muster, which is why seven-seater SUVs, like this Volvo XC90, are super popular among parents of kids named Binky and Marmaduke who go to posh private schools. But should you overlook the BMW X5, should you walk past the Audi Q7 dealer and go straight down to your local meatball and pour him to buy this Swedish slice of loveliness? Well, I've been living with this for a week to find out. Now, there's many things the XC90 is not. It's not a Zeppelin, for example, nor a block of cheddar, but it is not a cheap car either. It starts from £62,000 for an entry-level core model with the basic petrol engine, up to £83,000 for an all-singing, all-dancing ultimate version with the T8 plug-in hybrid petrol engine. Now, this is a mid-spec version, the Plus model, with that plug-in hybrid engine, and it's 76 grand. This one is 80 grand with options, but there aren't actually that many options on the list, thankfully, Volvo's kept it nice and simple. The paint, the tow bar, and the tinted windows. And that's about it. Oh, and it's £1,069 a month, and Volvo's ludicrously expensive, but very faff free subscription model. Nice. I'm not really sure why I just made that weird Zeppelin joke, but actually think about it, I've seen smaller blimps than the XC90. It's near as damn it five meters long, weighs 2.3 tons, it's huge. But thankfully mid-spec and upward cars get handy 360 degree cameras that do make parking it easier than you would think. Now we've got to talk about the wheels. It's on 21 inch wheels, this version, and those big wheels really do destroy the ride quality over potholes and sharp bumps in the road to the extent it wakes my kids up when I hit a pothole, which is suboptimal when you're trying to keep them asleep on long journeys. Now I'd really like to try the entry level core model on its 19 inch wheels, which are small and should make it really cushy. But then the ultimate version can be upgraded to have 22 inch wheels, but it does have air suspension, which should help. This one's on normal steel springs. But yeah, 22 inch wheels, you've got to really hate your spine to choose those, I think. But it's the interior where the XC90 really knocks its German rivals into a cocked set of lederhosen because I love it in here. The star of the show is this portrait-oriented 9-inch colour touchscreen. It kind of looks the same as when this car first came out back in 2015, but in 2022 it was upgraded to have Google Maps as its standard sat-nav, and it's got a Google Voice Assistant system as well, which works 200% better than any car manufacturer's attempt at doing maps or voice controls. It's brilliant. It will save it to your Google search history. So if you're searching for something on your phone on Google Maps, it will then appear on here if you want it to. It's great. I've got a digital dashboard. I've got lots of lovely wood trim. It's very Volvo. But the star of the show for me is, is the crystal knob. It's quite nice. It comes with this luxury wool blend seat option if you pick this. Really, really love wool seats. I did say on Instagram that it's vegan wool. Then I realized that... Um, yeah, you, you can't really do that yet. It's got to come from an animal. I think it's the otter, these ones. Really super lovely and super comfortable seats as well. It's a massive cliche, but these seats, I've done big six hour days driving in this car and I've got out feeling as if I've got out of a Volvo XC90, which is a very good thing. Now the sound system in this car, in the core version, it's okay. In this plus version, you get an upgraded calm and hard on sound system, which is thumping. It's got a subwoofer, it sounds amazing. And then you've got the ultimate version, you get a Bowser and Wilkins system, which will tear your face off if you listen to Barbie by Aqua, according to my friend at Volvo anyway. Annoyances, I don't like the fact you've got to press a button to open the glove box, but it is a big glove box, glove box, glove box, gloves box at least. And the other annoying thing is you don't get head-up display until you get to an ultimate model. So I've just got a bit of plastic here, which blocks off where it would go. And I can see that in the windscreen and the reflection. So it's just reminding me constantly I didn't pay 80 million pounds. Oh, you get wireless charging as standard and the cup holders are decent and the door bins are big as well, but they're not felt lined, so stuff rattles around. Should we check out the back seats? I did too many words for this bit. Sorry, you can wake up now. Back seat space in the XC90 is, as you would hope, ludicrous. It's like being in a large part of a castle back here. I've got loads of knee room. That's my driving position. I'm six foot three. Loads of foot room, loads of headroom, and the seats are at a really nice angle for falling asleep back here with really comfy headrests. And they also do go upright a bit more and they do slide back and forth too. Now I've got a luggage net here. I've got a reasonable sized door bin that can hold a big bottle of water. And I've got two USB-Cs down here as well as a little touchscreen to turn on my heated rear seat and all the other stuff. Now, you do get three separate seats in the back of here, which is quite nice. So if you want your kids to be slightly more separated and adjust their angles of dangle individually, this is the car for you. Oh, and I've got window blinds as well, so you can stop your children being roasted to a crisp in the summer that is never gonna come. It's July, why is it raining? 
Right, no dignity time. I'm gonna try and squeeze myself into the back row of seats in an XC90. So slide the front seat forward, and then I've got a little bit of room there with which to go in. I might cut this so you don't see my underwear, especially my bra. Right, hang on. Okay, that is not so bad, but I think I'm gonna have knee problems here. Let me hoist this back. Oh, that isn't actually so bad. You probably can't see me, but my knees are jammed into that. My feet are kind of trapped underneath it and my head is in the roof, but I'm six foot three. It's not meant for people like me. That's actually not the worst back row of seats I've ever been in. And I've got a cup holder and an armrest and a little stowage box back here too. Do you feel a little bit like a British intelligence operative that's been put in a bathtub in a bag? Ugh. It's when you approach the XC90's pert posterior that you realize why you've bought such a big car. It's got a 775 liter boot with that third row of seats flip down, flip them up, and you've still got 400 liters, which is 20 more than in a Volkswagen Golf. It's absurdly big, and it's nice and flat and level from the load lip all the way to the middle row of seats. And it's also got this handy load divider that flips up. So if you're not using the whole boot, your stuff won't rattle around. It's really, really quite clever. It's just a very useful space. Now, if you do want to put the rear row of seats up, you've got to whip the parcel shelf out and then, find somewhere to put the parcel shelf because it doesn't fit under the boot floor. And you can eventually hoik the rear seats out, but you've got to move the middle seats first. And I've got my child seats in, so I can't do that. Well, that's a bit of a faff, but I guess you wouldn't be using the rear seats if you had child seats in the middle row. Anyway, the electrically opening boot is standard on all models. Can we go and drive it now? Right, you're gonna go for a drive in the XC90, you put your foot in the brake and twist this to start it, then you pull your crystal knob back into D, and then you immediately think, oh my God, this is absolutely huge, but it's covered in cameras as long as you get a plus model or higher. So it's actually very easy to drive and to park as well. You sit nice and high in these really comfy seats, and you've got big door mirrors as well, so you can see out and see what you're about to crush. I mean, drive over. But yes, it's a very safe car, obviously. It's a Volvo, that's what they do. They do crash testing that you have to do, and then they do more, and they've got their own safety facilities to do all this kind of stuff. So this five-star Euro NCAP packed to the gunnels with automatic emergency braking that can detect not only cyclists and pedestrians, but large animals as well, and stop you in time. It's got lane keeping assist. It's got basically every single bit of safety kit that you could really want, but none of it is actually intrusive. Now, let's talk about the engine in this because it's the plug-in hybrid. So it's got a two litre petrol engine, which is twin charged. It's got about 310 horsepower, which is very powerful, but then it's got about 165 horsepower of electric shunt on the back axle as well so 450 horsepower this thing is fast for a big suv not to 62 in just over five seconds it is um probably unnecessary to be quite honest and when you put your foot down it takes a little while to wake up and then um the petrol engine does its work but it's the electric motor that you really notice and it feels especially fast when you boot it from 40 up to 60 where the electric motor really just goes boom and down the road you go it is probably again unnecessarily fast especially because this car doesn't enjoy being hustled it just wants to lope along it doesn't steer as sportly as an x5 or anything like that and it doesn't encourage you to drive it like a loon now that said it is firm on its suspension which means it doesn't roll as much from memory as an audi q7 does but yeah, the downside to that is it's a little bit jiggly. It's okay on most roads, but as soon as there's a manhole cover or pothole, you get bum 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 into the cabin, which is just at odds with the fact you've got these relaxing seats that are made of wool, you've got all this nice relaxing stuff, and then you're getting jiggled about. So it will be interesting to see if Volvo can improve that for this car's successor, the EX90, which is coming out in 2024. And that's got a massive electric battery and is probably going to weigh even more than this. Now, there are petrol and diesel options for this, thankfully. They're both four cylinders with about 235 horsepower. I've not driven them, but apparently they're okay. But to be honest, for a plug-in hybrid, this is very uncompromised. Normally, when you buy a plug-in hybrid car, you get a small fuel tank and a small battery that's useless. With this, you get a whopping 60-something litre fuel tank, so you can do a genuine 500 miles on petrol alone, and a useful 40 miles on electric power alone as well. And when this has got a full battery, it's really nice. Just swooshing around in silence, being as relaxed as you can be. Now, because I'm a bad journalist, 
I've let the battery run dry and I've done most of my 400 miles in this car on a dead battery or an empty battery, I should say. And normally in a 2.3 ton SUV with a powerful petrol engine, that would mean your MPG properly tanks. But I've been getting 33 to 35 MPG. That might not sound a lot, but bear in mind the performance on offer and the weight and the size of this thing. I just, I'm not sure I'd bother charging it, to be honest. And it still gives you electrical power. It leaves just enough in reserve so you can always use it. But my goodness, it's oddly efficient for such a large beast. And I've been really impressed with that. All right, we're going to accelerate from 30 up to 70 in the XC90 and listen to this. You can hear the petrol engine quite clearly. It's not deafening, but it's just got a bit of a roar that you might not expect in a big SUV. But it certainly gets you to 70 really quite quickly. And once you're there, it's pretty refined. You've just got a bit of wind noise off the big door mirror here. And not much tire roar, to be honest. You can just hear the bumps in the road coming up through those big wheels. Now the cruise control, as you'd expect, is semi kind of self-driving. It will steer for you, keep you in your lane, and it will accelerate and brake for you and keep you rigidly to the speed limits, should you wish. But yeah, it's a very relaxing cruiser. But again, I think an Audi Q7 is a little bit more relaxing because it's just a bit less fidgety. That's enough boring stuff about how this drives. Let's head back to me for a conclusion in the lay by of justice. So let's sum up quickly. The Volvo XC90 is one of the best seven-seater SUVs you can buy. It isn't cheap, but nor is any of its rivals. I think an X5 and a Q7 do drive slightly better than this. They're a bit more interesting to drive. And the X5 especially is more comfortable over bumpy roads than this. Now it's one of the main downsides of this Volvo. It's just a little bit too jiggly for my liking. So try and get one of their suspension or smaller wheels if you can. But hey, this beats the BMW and Audi. When it comes to what matters to me, luggage space if you want big boot space with all three rows up this is basically the king at the moment the third row seats are actually reasonably useful as far as these things go i just wish it had a six cylinder diesel option like the audi in the bmw but in terms of plugins it's super fast and actually reasonably efficient even with a flat battery as we found out getting 33 34 mpg so yeah super comfy i like the tech i love the google maps integration sure you have to plug in to get carplay but that's a minor niggle and i think it still just has stood the test of time in the aesthetics department as well unlike this t-shirt which probably needs to go in the bin but anyway hopefully this has been helpful please hit like if this video has been good that's the big cartoon thumb and do subscribe and i will see you next time when i won't be standing in a lay-by with men with lycra cycling temptingly past not that tempting i could smell them oh and go down to the comments and leave me the swedish word for giant meatballs on a stick thank you